Hello. Today I want to show you how you can improve the thermal characteristics of this uh, knockoff Echo 907 iron. These sell on eBay for like 6 to 12 dollars and in contrast to the original one uh, they have a small flaw built in which uh, prevents it from performing perfectly but this flaw is uh, thankfully easy to work around so I'm going to show you how to do this today. So this is the heating element inside. They sell for like two dollars each. These are not genuine I assume as well. So this is how it looks on the inside. And these are non-genuine tips as well and they sell for like ten dollar a dozen or even cheaper and because there are so many makers of these things to ensure that they all fit together properly they increase the tolerances by a great margin so the genuine Hakko has precisely four millimeter inner di diameter here and four millimeter outer diameter there. Now let's check the exact measurements of the knockoff versions. So here you can see that the outer diameter of this ceramic heater element is about 3.8 millimeters roughly. And the inner diameter of that tip is around 4.1 millimeter. So now when I am inserting the tip I have a heater element into the tip. It works in very loosely like this and obviously there's around a 0 0.15 millimeter gap all around. This gap is filled with air naturally and so you don't get a very good thermal transfer of the heat from the heater element to the soldering tip which means the heat element will get hot and the soldering station will show you that it actually reached operating temperature but this is only for the heat element and the tip stays cooler. This is except uh, this is really a problem when you want to uh, work with really large parts which you want to heat up and then you got a lot of thermal th uh, flow out of uh, the tip you lose a lot of thermal energy and because of the air gap in between the tip, the ceramic heater cannot deliver as much energy to the tip as would be needed to maintain the temperature. So to fill this gap that I just mentioned we need some copper sheet metal. Um, I think it also sells on eBay and uh, best suited is some with a tenth of a millimeter thickness, so it's 0 0.1 millimeter thick. And um, what you're going to do is you have roughly 4 millimeter times pi is around 12 millimeter wide, so that it fits once around the heat element, and the required length is about 25 millimeter. So you cut a piece 12 by 25 millimeter. Then you take your favorite 3.5 millimeter drill and wrap it around and it will open up a little after wrapping because it's a little elastic. So it is just a, shy, a tiny bit below 4 millimeter inner diameter and this is what you want to make. So then you insert this copper sheet metal thing all the way into the tip a little pressure just like that and now you can push the ceramic heater element in as well and you will notice that it will need some force to get in and now I can try to wiggle I actually move the vise with me but this part it does not wiggle anymore which means you got a pretty good 
filled air gap by the copper and the thermal transfer will vastly improve. Now, uh, as I mentioned, there are very many makers or uh, manufacturers of both heater elements and tips, so your clearance between the air gap between both parts may vary, but there are different copper materials available, like 0.05 millimeters, which would be half the thickness, and you can also make small parts from that thickness to fit in if it should still be too loose with a one tenth millimeter copper foil. So I made some parts in advance if I should run into the problem. Now this one is halfway easy to remove, but I recommend not removing the tip all the time. These irons are so cheap that you can absolutely afford multiple ones and exchange them instead of exchanging tips. So I got one with a small tip for fine soldering. Here is my collection and oh, this is the Vela, the good one. And the other Hako. This one has a big fat tip for soldering like RC electrical connectors with large wires or big copper stuff, ESCs, whatever. So I simply switch irons instead of switching tips. Now here's a little test that you can do before and after the mod to uh, find out if it brings any benefits, any advantages. So what I have here is a little piece of copper sheet metal with about half a millimeter thickness. So the really small stuff I showed you before to make the gap filler it will not work. So we need a rather large part of copper. You could also take like a copper penny or whatever and you solder a really big wire on one end. And what you're going to do is you let everything cool to room temperature. Then you take your iron, put it here and heat up the whole thing. And the tin here will melt, then the heat will travel downwards. You leave your iron here all the time. And at some point this, cop uh, this solder will melt and the wire will fall down because of this. And you stop the time from when you place your iron here with a fixed temperature until the wire falls off. And afterwards you repeat the experiment when you insert the copper and um, then you know if you have a shorter time that the thermal transfer got better actually. So when I did this experiment I noticed a vast improvement and now this iron here, this Hako knockoff, is 90% as good as my 200 euro Vela set. This is of course the best iron and the best soldering station I ever had. But uh, this one, now I use it for mission critical soldering my RC stuff, but for not so much important everyday stuff. I use my echoes, but uh, as they are almost as good as this one, I get about 90% of the heating time with the Vela, which means it has about 10% better thermal characteristics, I would say. Um, I would easily trust my soldering also when I did it with the echoes.